Hey, pet parent. I'm so excited to introduce today's guest to you because Elsa Peralta is a co-founder of Dog Rescue Without Borders, which is the rescue in San Diego where my husband and I adopted our dog, Kim, over six years ago. Now, as you'll hear me explain in the episode, it was not our intention to rescue a dog from Mexico. It was not our intention to go outside of the United States. I know that there is a huge need right here at home for pets in need. And even though we lived so close to the border of Mexico, I still initially was looking at dogs in the United States. In fact, I had messaged, I had filled out applications with many rescues in the area. And as fate would have it, Dog Rescue Without Borders, still to this day, over six years later, Dog Rescue Without Borders is the only one that followed up with us. So I absolutely believe that it was fate that we adopted Kimberly. And of course, she is the perfect fit for us. We love her so much. But I digress because Elsa is not only the co-founder of Dog Rescue Without Borders, she also has her own dogs, three of them, Louie, Mina, and Tiki. She says that spending time with her babies and her husband is the absolute best. Dog Rescue Without Borders is a nonprofit dog rescue that uses their team of people uh, along with other local rescue groups in Tijuana, Mexico. They are dedicated to saving homeless and abandoned dogs from the streets or high kill shelters in the area to find them permanent loving Homes. They are a foster-based rescue. So if you are in the San Diego County area, please look up Dog Rescue Without Borders. I'm so excited to have been able to not only meet Elsa, adopt our dog Kimberly, but also become friends with her over the years. We stayed in contact. I was as active as I possibly could with helping out the rescue. Uh, at many years after we adopted Kimberly up until the time we moved to Texas. So I hope you enjoy today's episode, learn a little bit more about Elsa and the rescue. Honestly, sometimes we forget what that side of rescue looks like. We're just enamored with all the dogs, all the cute dogs that we see on social media. So it can be a really good opportunity for us to hear the reality of, of what rescue is all about. Without any further ado, here is Elsa Peralta of Dog Rescue Without Borders. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. So Elsa, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to have you uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because I, you know, I was one of the fortunate ones who was able to develop a relationship with the person running the rescue I adopted <laughs> my dog from. Um, but also because, you know, rescues are so important to the animal community in general. And Dog Rescue Without Borders, for me, has been very, very special because that's where we got Kim. And while I love all of the dogs I have ever had, and I love everybody else's dogs, too, <laughs> um, my yes. husband always tells me that I have to figure out a way to make Kim last forever and live forever because <laughs> she's just the best dog he's ever had. So we thank you so much for bringing her to us. Um, but I would love for you to tell me a little bit about yourself, a little bit about Dog Rescue Without Borders, how you started it. I know you have um, some people that you started it with. 
and kind of like where you are today with the rescue. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, so we started the organization um, in 2011. And um, it was very, honestly, very random. I, I had met somebody at work who was a love dog, uh, 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 dog lover. And um, through social media, we heard about a dog that needed help um, in TJ, in Tijuana. Uh, the dog had cancer and an organization was asking for resources to help this dog. So Michelle, my coworker, and I started contacting this group through social media uh, to help this dog. We would send donations, special food and, you know, supplies. And um, long story short, the foster of that dog, we contacted that person and we found out that they were, she was not getting any help from the organization. And that broke our hearts truly because we really wanted to help this dog. But we saw this as an opportunity to um, start our own rescue group. Because we said, well, that's the only way we're going to know for sure that the dogs are getting the help. And that's basically how we started. It was the foster that was fostering that dog. Her name was Tonya. And um, Cynthia, who was another person that was helping that dog, and Michelle and myself. Those were the four of us through this not good of an experience, right? Got in touch and met. That's how we met. And um, and pretty much that's how we started the organization. That was the very beginning of it. And it was it was an opportunity. And, and now here we are 11 years later, still together working and helping the dogs in need, mainly from TJ. Yeah, mainly from Tijuana. Yeah, and it is such... <laughs> You know, I, I have to say, and I didn't know if I was going to say this, but I, when I, we first adopted Kim, because I had a, a small social media presence, um, which I've grown since then, thank goodness, but I got comments saying, you know, how, like, why would you adopt a dog from Mexico when there are so many dogs in the U.S. in need? And yeah, there are plenty of dogs of the, in the U.S. in need. But I will say, I actually, when we were ready to adopt a dog, I don't even, I can't even tell you. I don't remember now. I contacted so many rescues, and Dog Rescue Without Borders was the only rescue that contacted me back. And I just took that as a sign because it wasn't like there was anything funky on our application. Like we're good people. Um, right. good pet parents, you know what I mean? We had a fenced in yard, like dogs live inside, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't, there weren't any red flags on our application, but to me, it was just meant to be like Kim was supposed to be ours. <laughs> I think, I believe in that. I believe that. Yeah. You know what, Jessica, we do, we're a very small group still, right? We're a very yeah. small uh, group, all volunteer based, right? We, it's a hundred percent nonprofit. Um, we take a lot of pride in our, what we do and it, and because it's all dog center cats, sometimes cats, as you know, and we, we really do our best to respond to those that apply, right? We believe that anybody who applies deserves respect because they're submitting an application. They need to at least hear back. Even if the dog is in the pipeline for an adoption, we have that responsibility, right? That at least inform the families that the dog is, is in the pipeline for, to meet, you know, for meet and greet. We'll let you know if they don't get adopted, right? We'll circle back. Um, and, and, you know, we started, we were four people initially, and now the group is not really that big. We're about 10 people um, between foster parents and those that um, work with social media, helping with social media, or 
uh, responding to applications, coordinating the meeting reads, attending the meeting reads. Um, in still a small group, but we try to do our best with what we have. And, um, you know, as I said, all in function of the doggies, right? Yeah. We want the best for them. And we really want them to be 100% ready before they go to a family, right? Spay, neuter, dewormed, um, blood work done, 4DX, microchipping, very important, right? Um, they have to be 100% ready before they go to a home. And of course, you know, we provide all that paperwork information to the families, um, Try to do our best both ways, you know, not only for the dogs, also for the families. It's it's a long time commitment, um, and you know, it can be a fifteen year commitment, and we want it to uh, work out. And that's why we we um, we always focus on the best outcome for for the dog and the families. Yeah, I you know it's it's tough. Um, I've gotten to the point where, I, you know, I used to, when I started out, I was doing TNR and then I was helping out at, you know, adoption events at Petco. And I mean, it's tough. So I, I know like emotionally how tough it was for me. And I wasn't even in the position, position that you're in. What do you think is like the, for you, what's the hardest part of rescue? Yeah, I think of course, you know, it's, um, the difficult cases, right? The, the, the seeing what some of these dogs go through, um, lots of suffering, not all of them, you know, are just dogs that are relinquished by people. I mean, those are like the best cases. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but, um, you know, they live at a home and they cannot take care of the dog anymore. And they look for support. Sometimes if we have the capacity, we take them. That's, you know, best case, case scenario for the dogs. But many times we do pick up dogs from the streets that are suffering or, you know, dogs that suffer abuse, beatings. Um, and that is tough, right? That is like emotionally, it takes a toll on you. But then when you see what happens after that, right? They they are rehabilitated, not only physically, but also emotionally. The dogs need to be rehabilitated, right? As you know. Um, and then you see them thriving in an environment where they're loved and taken care of. And that's like the best thing that can happen to any of us, right? Receiving the pictures, getting pictures, updates, um, saying, hey, you know, so-and-so is so happy and, you know, uh, thriving, you know, getting all this love. It's just, I think that's why we're still, after 11 years, you know, with Dog Rescue Up Borders, because that's, I don't know, a part of life that is like the highlight, really, of our lives, that volunteer. Yeah, it is all about the, the after story. <laughs> Right. Yes, absolutely. It's just so amazing. It's just so amazing. But definitely that's the hard part, right? From and then the hard part, you know, from running the the the, the rescue uh, is finding fosters. Finding people that can, you know, support because many times we cannot rescue more because we don't have the the, the capability to take mm -hmm. on more and always the hard part is finding a responsible foster parent that can, you know, help, um, with at least, you know, one more dog. And, um, so that's, that's a difficult, that's a difficult part, um, from that perspective. Yeah. So it sounds like there are lots of different types of opportunities for people to be able to help out, whether it's Dog Rescue Without Borders or another rescue local to them. So what can what are some of the things that pe you could tell people to think about that they can they can offer support, whether if they're in San Diego, 
def, you know, reach out to Dog Rescue Without Borders. Yes. But if you're somewhere else, find a local rescue that you connect with. And there are so many different ways that you can help them out. What what are you always looking for? Yeah, absolutely. Any everybody can do something, right? Doesn't cost <laughs> money. Um, it can be, of course, of course, if you have the time, the space, the <laughs> the time especially to foster that would be great obviously if you can adopt that's that that's that's what we're you know that's our dream all of the dogs finding a loving home um but if you cannot adopt you cannot foster um try volunteering right try volunteering with your local with a local organization you know it can be from maybe you can do social media or maybe you can go pick up supplies or maybe you can attend meeting greets or adoption events for an hour or two. Um, maybe you can drive, you know, to the foster homes to bring donations or supplies. Um, if you cannot volunteer, you don't have the time, maybe donate. If you have a dollar or two or you have a bag of dog food, donate. Um, and if you cannot donate because you don't have the means, um, maybe you can network the dogs that are looking for homes, right? That doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, and maybe it's just going to be five minutes a day. You can go and see what dogs are at your shelter or local rescue and repost those profiles in your social media, you know, or if you have friends that are looking for dogs, you know, send them the profile. Um, reach out to the community and and provide that visibility, you know, those dogs that are looking for a home. So there's many ways. And as I said, Jessica, it doesn't cost a lot of money, right? To just, you know, while you're watching TV, maybe you can repost a profile in your, in your social media page or Instagram, Facebook. So yeah, there's many absolutely. ways. Yeah, many ways so many. that people can support. <laughs> So, so many ways. I know um, I've seen in the past, you know, rescues posting like, hey, if you happen to do accounting or bookkeeping, like, yes. you know, if you if you can offer your service, because there, there's probably not, it's, def, it's not even a part-time job, probably, <laughs> you know, to just on the side, do our bookkeeping or uh, like you said, social media, um, you know, help create flyers or pet profiles. Um, yeah, it's, or if you're a photographer, you know, exactly. to, to come out and take pictures um, of the animals that need adoption. Like there's so many different ways to get involved. Um, and I think highlighting all of that <clears throat> can be really important because people don't think about it. They're like, oh, I don't have the extra money this month or, you know, whatever it may be. But there's so many other things uh, that you can do. And, um, yeah, so I thank you so much for, for coming on and telling us about Dog Rescue Without Borders. I know, again, there are so many different rescues in our country, but, um, finding one that's just close to your heart that you're, you feel connected to can, can really be beneficial. Um, we got really lucky finding Kim through, through Dog Rescue Without Borders. Um, she's just been the best. And oh. she's, she's like, you know, she, she makes our family, <laughs> right? Um, she's one of those dogs that it's like, we don't know what we would do without her for sure. And um, I actually, oh, I, I just got this for Christmas. I want to show you. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so beautiful. Isn't it? Oh, that is wonderful, Jessica. <laughs> it's um, so beautiful. So that was one of my Christmas presents from my husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found the, it's called Flower Pup on, on I, I think I found them on Facebook. But they like digitally take a picture of your pet and they, you know, t digitally crop them out and, put all these flowers around them. It's really pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's definitely our, you know, part of the family. 
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So um, again, there are lots of different ways. And if you're in San Diego County, um, definitely reach out to Dog Rescue Without Borders. Um, if nothing else, you know, make sure to check out their um, website. And I think you're on Pet Finder too. Like if you are looking to adopt a dog, that's, you know, one of, one of the more obvious ways to support Dog Rescue Without Borders. But how can people find you? Um, if they want to adopt, if they want to donate, if they want to volunteer? Yes. Um, so our website is uh, drwb.org. So like Dog Rescue Without Borders. Um, we have a page with the dog's profiles and the adoption application. There's a link to PayPal there if you want to donate. Um, also, we are on Pet Finder and Adopt a Pet. And um, social media, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. So there's um, information there for you can reach out. Our, our, our email also is info at drwb.org if anybody wants to contact us directly. Perfect. Well, I do hope that everybody does at least go follow and that way you can network the dogs and sometimes cats that uh, need homes um, or donate if you can. And um, definitely check out drwb.org. I'll put all the links uh, in the show notes to the website and to social media so you can go follow Dog Rescue Without Borders. And I just, I really hope First of all, if you are in San Diego County, please reach out to Dog Rescue Without Borders. But anywhere you may be that you find a rescue local to you and support them any way that you can um, so that we can help help the shelters <laughs> um, and help help dogs and cats. <laughs> That's the the bottom line, right, is, is helping get these dogs into loving homes. Thank you so much for being here, Elsa. Um, I really appreciate everything that you and Michelle and everybody else uh, does for the dogs. And uh, again, we wouldn't have Kim without you. So I appreciate it. Of course. No, thank you so much for having me, Jessica. It's always a pleasure. And uh, thank you, everybody, for supporting Dog Rescue Without Borders. Again, even if you can just network our donkeys is going to be a lot of help. Uh, please give Kim a big, big kiss for me. And um, thank you for giving her a wonderful family and a home. We will always oh, be course. grateful to you and your family. Thank you so oh, much. Yes, thank you. And everybody, make sure to give your pets some extra love from both me and Elsa today. Absolutely. Yes. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. Oh, oh.